So yesterday was a good news for earnings reports for basically everybody. AMD and Intel had great first quarter numbers that they reported, but it's not all good news, sunshine, cherry, rain blossoms, and all of that good stuff. Apparently, we also found out from Intel that not only was their earning reports great, but then uh, 10 nanometers delayed even more. So 10 nanometer is the process that we've been waiting on for us to get higher end chips from Intel. So ever since the 4790K or ever since past that, we had Skylake, which was 14 nanometer. Then we had KB Lake, which was 14 nanometer. Then we have Coffee Lake, which is 14 nanometer. And it appears that we're also getting another 14 nanometer chip, even though we were supposed to be on 10 nanometers a few years ago. We weren't supposed to keep having 10 nanometer chips. It's one of the reasons that AMD has been able to catch up to Intel is because of the fact that they've kind of been stagnating in their processes. So this article is coming from Tom's Hardware. Intel's 10 nanometer is broken, delayed until 2019. So apparently as a result of serious production problems with its 10 nanometer process, Intel announced that it's shipping yet more 14 nanometer iterations this year. They'll come as Whiskey Lake processors destined for the desktop and Cascade Lake Xeons for the data center. So yay, we get to drink our sorrows away with Whiskey Lake, fantastic. I'm so glad that Intel's not releasing anything new. So continuing on in the article, they said Intel announced that it had delayed high volume 10 nanometer production to, to an unspecified time in 2019. Meanwhile, its competitors like TSMC are beginning high volume manufacturing of seven nanometer alternatives. Continue on, they just explained that the, the, the nanometer process for developing all of this kind of stuff isn't really always measured correctly. So like TSMC seven nanometer isn't exactly the same thing as Intel being on 10 nanometer or even on seven nanometer themselves. We would expect that Intel's seven nanometer would be way better than TSMC's just because of how it's being measured. But apparently Intel just can't get it right. We have to stay on 14 nanometer for another generation. Then the article continues that the delay may seem a minor matter, but Intel has sold processors based on the underlying Skylake microarchitecture since 2015, and it's been stuck at 14 nanometer process since 2014. That means Intel is on the fourth or technically fifth iteration of the same process, which has hampered its ability to bring new microarchitectures to market. That doesn't bode well for a company that regularly claims its process no technology is three years ahead of its competitors because it's probably not at this point. Then they say that the CEO explained bit off a little too much on this thing by increasing 10 nanometer density 2.7 times over the 14 nanometer node. By comparison, Intel increased only 2.4 times when it moved to 14 nanometer. And then they explain currently Intel's multi-patterning process is generating too many yield reducing defects to produce 10 nanometer cost effectively. So basically they have it working sometimes, they don't have it working other times, but when it's not working, it's not working in such a large proportion that it makes it not really uh, retail friendly for them to actually produce it. And then they say Intel was unwilling to commit to high volume production in the first half of 2019. So it's possible 10 nanometer will be delayed until the second half of the year. And then further on, just down the article, so th there's a lot of technical speak in this article. I highly recommend you check it out. The link will be in the video description for it, but they talk about process technologies require extensive incubation times, but Intel's obviously bringing the pieces together quickly, but its competitors, such as AMD, are executing as well on their future architectures. AMD already has working seven nanometer GPUs in the labs and projects it will sample seven nanometer Epic II processors this year, both will be in volume production early next year. So not only is Intel falling behind on their own roadmap, AMD is catching up, TM TSMC is catching up, Qualcomm will likely catch up. Intel is starting to lose the plot on how they're, they're actually able to devise these, uh, these process nodes, which for all we can bash Intel, they are clearly trying. They're putting the R&D in there. Uh, the article does express that they're not putting as much as they probably should be. They haven't really increased it all that much. I think it was a 3% increase. Yeah, it was just a 3% increase on their R&D spend this year. So they're not highly prioritizing it, it doesn't seem like, but they are putting effort into it. It just appears that they're having a lot harder trouble because as you get smaller on actually making you know, CPUs, it makes it very difficult to continue to do it. There's a reason they have to spend billions of dollars on these processors and then they have to sell them in droves at high price points in order to even recoup the cost and then pay for the next generation of research. It takes a lot of money to get going and it's also one of the reasons why AMD took so long to catch up because once you fall behind, it's very expensive to actually, you know, try to retake the crown. But however, it's looking like AMD might actually have that chance in 2019 or 2020 if they can actually 
work on their 7 nanometer process at the same time that Intel is delaying their 10 nanometer process. We might actually see Epic 2 chips that can compete with Intel's Xeon chips that are still on 14 nanometer, Cascade Lake or whatever it's going to be called. So on one end, we complained quite a bit here on the channel that, you know, Intel was sitting on their rear ends, not really trying to make a move because they didn't have to because AMD was coming up on them. And that's why we saw a KB Lake refresh that only had quad cores at the high end. And then we got Coffee Lake, which came nine months, only nine months after KB Lake. And then you had to buy an entirely new motherboard because the chipset and the socket don't match. And so you have to get a new motherboard for your Coffee Lake processors, even though they're based on the same 14 nanometer architecture, have the same LGA 1151 pin count. So in, in one respect, Intel hasn't been putting enough attention to it. But then on the other hand, they are having technical difficulties to actually advance things further. But then it could be argued that they're not really trying because they haven't had the need to, so they're not putting the money in the R&D where they should, whereas NVIDIA is investing a butt-ton of R&D in all of their graphics cards to actually kind of outpace where AMD is. Intel kind of just rested on its laurels, and, you know, once they got to the point where they were king of the hill, they were just like, we don't need to do TikTok anymore. We can just do TikTok, talk, talk, talk. Oh no, everything's broken. We need to do talk again, which is apparently where we are right now. But I want to hear what you guys think of this. Are you sick and tired of 14 nanometer? Are you sick of refreshes upon refreshes upon refreshes? Because, you know, AMD's notorious for doing that on their GPUs. It's apparently what Intel's going to keep doing on their CPUs. Do you uh, find hope for AMD potentially taking the performance crown from Intel in the next couple of years. That would be great in my opinion. I think we need more competition. Anyways, let me know your thoughts down in the comments or in the Discord. We can chat down there. Be sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.